Hey there, this is Malorian, and this is going to be kind of my final thoughts video on the Brawler Bash tournament. So, while the pictures of the armies kind of scatter, go by, uh, I'm just going to kind of talk about how I did the tournament, what I thought of the tournament, and really breaking down my list as well. So, first of all, I ended up the tournament being 3 and 2. Now, uh, really going into a tournament, my goal is always to win more than I lose. And so to that effect, I did very well. well I mean, not very well, I, I actually met my goal. Uh, however, of course, uh, if you've seen my video, video reports, you can see that there are some times I, I didn't do as well as I, I thought I would have. I, I made a, a lot of mistakes. Um, I mean, animosity and dice are going to happen, but... Um, I was still left at the end of the tournament feeling a little bit bothered that I made the mistakes I did. Um, but then again, hey, you know, if I would have not made those mistakes and got bigger scores in one game, I would have had a harder opponent for the next game. So you can't really go back and look at those things. But uh, another thing for placings is that after when I was all done uh, and, you know, when I, I got that last big win, I was like, hooray, I'm going to finish in the top 50% uh, at least. Uh, then, however... When it actually came out, I looked at it, and I got, like, I can't remember if I was 49th or 59th, but out of 92, either way, that's in the bottom half. And I was like, whoa, what the hell happened there? Uh, but the real thing that affected me was the uh, painting score. So, of course, I, I, I mean, my army is not super well painted. Uh, the the way that this was scored was a lot different from last year. Last year, there was this uh, page-long sheet with things you could check off, and I actually tied once bitten, which was crazy, because he's such a be much better painter. However, since I had some things like more conversions, and I had uh, handmade banners and stuff like that, uh, I actually got, you know, those points kind of worked out, and I had a pretty good painting score. This year, you know, I, I didn't have quite enough time, so some of my movement trays weren't painted. I didn't have a, a super crazy base, uh, like display, display tray like other people, so that held me back. And as well, I mean, this is being now marked by uh, really good painters, and I mean, straight up, I'm not a really good painter. I, I paint to a tabletop quality, and so that really held me back. It was actually kind of crazy where if you look just at plain... Uh, scores of how you did for just generalship, right? Points you got in the game. I actually did really well. You know, if you compare to guys like Once Bitten and uh, Anthony who ended up 14th and 15th, I'm not really that much farther below them. So, you know, I actually did fairly well. And when you look at the people all around me, I have way more points than a lot of people around me. However, since I'm held back by painting, that's the way that ended up. So, um, a little bit disappointing there, but understandable, right? Whenever you go into a tournament that's based off uh, painting uh, scores being a big part of it, I know I'm always going to be held back. So, what are my thoughts of the real tournament? Well, uh, first of all, it was, remember, a 3,000 point tournament, uh, no grand armies, and I think that's fantastic. I think that's a really perfect size for Warhammer Fantasy, and uh, really have no problem there. Uh, as well, I mean, well, the only comp you really had going into it is there were a few uh, special characters that were banned. As well, they made uh, a few changes to things saying like uh, buildings should only hold 30 people and stuff like that. Uh, really, my, my, my only beef with any of this is I like staying to the rule book as much as possible. So, uh, I, okay. I have to do this in two parts. First of all, the special characters, I would say I'd rather see it be special characters all allowed or special characters not allowed. I, I think once you start saying these guys are banned, they, you start asking the questions like, well, why isn't this guy banned and this guy and this guy? It's really easier just to make it a solid line saying, no, everything yes, everything no. But otherwise, you know, that's, that's not a deal breaker or anything like that. Uh, the one for buildings, I, I would rather they didn't do that either because uh, really, again, I'd rather they keep it straight to what the, the rule book is because once you start making changes again, you start saying, well, maybe you should be actually changing this rule and maybe you should be changing this rule. So it's again, it's just a slippery slope that starts some arguments. Uh, 
But really, I mean, one of the things that really came up in this tournament is seeing people that took big kind of Death Star units with lots of characters. Um, if you saw the reports on the Sustainable Center, you'll see that uh, that was one of his biggest uh, complaints, was that he faced one of those and was just like, what the hell am I going to do against this? Now, if you allow the big units to go into buildings, that just gets worse. So... From that point, I could see, like, oh, maybe it's good that they just kept it to 30, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, that could have been handled more with scenarios, right? If the scenarios were more where you can't just hide in a building, you have to get out and do stuff, uh, that would work itself out. Plus, if you're hiding in a building, normally you just can't get as many points. And so even though you might win the game overall... Uh, you're not going to be able to get the full points to get to the winners. Now, of course, the other <clears throat> counter to the counter is the whole idea that, well, some people still don't care about that, and if you're the unlucky guy that goes up against a Death Star, you're just kind of in trouble. So that's kind of uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, but either way, I mean, I just kind of more side with the side of stick to the regular rule book uh, so that... I mean, again, if, if you say, oh, well, buildings should only hold 30, then maybe somebody else says, well, maybe you shouldn't be stubborn in the building. Or somebody says, oh, when you disrupt ranks, you should take away steadfast, right? Like, it just starts that slippery slope. Now, also looking at the tournament, it was set up so that every game had a scenario. And then past that, you also had the cards you could play. I, I really like both these systems. Uh, I really like the cards you get to play. It really makes it so that you have to kind of use those those tactics to your to your advantage and say, okay, in this game, I think this is my best shot, uh, or this this is a really good card. I want to save that later for when it's more important. So I really like the cards. I know some others don't, but I think it's a a, a great addition. Uh, the other one is for the the actual scenarios. Uh, I, I, I like them all again. I think they're they're really good. Uh, it's definitely something you can't ignore, right? If you forget about the scenario, you can really lose out on a lot of points. Uh, however, again, it seems to be a lot of times that scenarios are also ones where really if you're crushing your opponent, it's going to be you'll get these things as well as long as you somewhat keep them in mind. So that can be a little bit difficult. I mean, it's... It, Unless you really get into some sort of crazy zone control and stuff like that. But either way, uh, no real complaints here. I really like the way that they did the, the scenarios and then the cards on top. Uh, otherwise, general things of the, the event. Oh, sorry, just keep on coughing here. Oh, Jeez. Uh, anyway, sorry about that, guys. Uh, anyway, uh some of the other stuff they had there, I mean, the, the place, again, Atomic Empire is a fantastic place. This the, this store is absolutely huge. Uh, we had 92 players. It was supposed to be 140, and, you know, they, they would have had room for it, right? They have so much room. Uh, terrain could have been an issue, but, you know, still, this is crazy. This is getting so big. Uh, kind of too bad it didn't get to 92, and also crazy just how many drops they had. Uh, they had more drops this year than they had actually participants two years ago. And really, what can you do to make sure that these guys aren't doing this? You know, do you get them to pay up front and you don't reimburse them? I think that's one of the biggest things you need to do is just to say, hey, you know, we're trying to plan for this stuff. Uh, sign up and stay signed up because it really kind of throws off your numbers as a TO when like you're, you're trying to plan for 140 people and you're like okay I need this many tables and this many mats and this much terrain and you know prepare for this much food and then all of a sudden oh a third of the people didn't show up and it really screws up your numbers so you know as a fellow TO I understand the, the frustration here and hopefully they can find some way to fix that but otherwise it was very well run uh, you know they had like a mic in there where they can uh, announce it they had a big screen where they showed the clocks you always know how much time you have uh, the only thing is a, an improvement I thought that they could do is of course uh, Maybe when they do the pairings, if the pairings could actually... They actually go and put the sheets everywhere. There's like all around the store. You could just go to any of these sheets and look where you're at. But with that screen up there, it'd be nice if you could just look up at the screen as well. Uh, you know, you could scroll through the list and all that stuff. So there's, there's just a little minor thing they could do. 
So otherwise, you know, fantastic event. Uh, great to see all the other YouTubers. Uh, the doubles event was was great. Got to play that with uh, Shimmer Gloom, and then doing the regular event after. Uh, probably the only real regrets I have is I didn't really have much time to get other uh, games in against other YouTubers, and so. You know, because a lot of times after the, the tournament, we're going out for supper or something like this. And so even though there were like 10 YouTubers there, I only got really the games against one Spitten because I'm, I was with him the whole weekend. And then uh, also a very, very fast speed hammer game, which will be next, uh, my next video, which will be against Nick from Long Island Wargaming. Which was, you know, kind of weird because we're rushing it and stuff. But uh, we were talking about how next year it'd be nice if maybe we don't do doubles, us YouTubers. And uh, instead we do, say, like a, a YouTuber separate tournament, right? So that could be lots of fun because I, I really enjoy doing those games. Like, first of all, it's enjoyable for me so I get because I get to watch these people on YouTube and then I get to meet them in person. Like, one of the things that came up this time is, like, Nick is a freaking giant. He is huge. We're looking at the video. You just can't tell that stuff, right? Uh, you know, whenever you play Anthony, you're like, yes, he is that angry in person. It's just the way he is now. But, you know, it's just these things where, first of all, it's just, it's enjoyable to play against these people you watch and see what they're like in person. And then as well, it's interesting tactically from a battle report perspective because you get to see both sides of the coin, right? You watch one report and you see like, oh, they're trying to do this and this and this. And then you watch the other side and say like, oh, wow, he was trying to do this and this fed into that. So I think that would be a, a really nice thing to do. Uh, past that though, I guess next I could be talking about my list. Now, my list was was kind of crazy again just to quickly go over it goblin war boss with the wizard hat night goblin bsb savage orc biggins 40 of them three units of 20 night goblins with four fanatics across there uh then i have two hordes of trolls and another unit of 16 river trolls now already in my my videos i'm getting comments saying hey you know why didn't you put more points into getting more characters uh you could be putting characters in each of those units to make them safer you could have had a better general why did you take the wizarding hat well <laughs> you gotta remember i i if you watch my video where i made this list i decided that i was going to take a malorian army i don't know if i can go back again and so i wanted this to be memorable i mean really when i first made a regular orc and goblin army it was exactly the same as last year. The, the, the meta and the, the other changes weren't significant enough that I had any change in my list. And I didn't want to just kind of go with my same standard list. And I want to go with something crazy. Uh, it's kind of funny that people actually said like, oh yeah, three hordes of trolls, typical Malorian. But I mean, I've, I've never done this before other than in big games and stuff. So uh, it was really cool to do. But clearly, clearly, I had a, a lot of liabilities between so much hinging on my general, right? If my general dies, uh, I'm screwed. I have stupidity ever all, all over the place. Plus, you know, animosity can always throw in its evil head as well. But uh, I mean, clearly, clearly, there, there have been very easy ways to make this list better. Uh, then at the same time, I have to look back in my reports and say there were times where I could have definitely played it smarter, right? Where I just did the wrong play and it would lead to ruin. So, and it's one of those things too where you have to be very careful. Uh, if I just move my uh, trolls so that they're 13 inches away from my general, guess what? They're completely useless. So you have to be very careful to make sure that that's all done. And I think that's one regret I have is I think that if I would have actually done more practice games, uh, where I was, I got burned for not being within my general's leadership range, uh, that would have been more grilled into my mind, and I would have been more careful of the tournament. But, eh, I, you know, <laughs> I've been playing for years. I, I should be knowing better anyway. Uh, looking back over it, uh, looking at my list, uh, the trolls and the river trolls did very well. Really liked them. They're just really Kelly stuff. Uh... The Night Goblins, they did their thing. A lot of times what I could have done better for deployment is the Night Goblins could have been more in the lead so that they clear out the chaff. 
But uh, probably the biggest disappointment of the whole tournament was, uh, first of all, my Savages, who normally, because uh, they had to be on a flank, the, the opponent just threw all this chaff at them, and they did almost nothing. Now, I'm split there, because if they're hunting down chaff the whole time, uh, then it's not in the way of the troll. So that's really good. But at the same time, they're also a big chunk of points. So maybe I could have taken a smaller unit of Savages. I could have put points somewhere else. I mean, that I was really at 25% core. So if I change points, uh, it would have to go to some other core. But maybe if I take other Night Goblin units with more Fanatics or, or something like that, or, or just break up the, the Savages so that there are two units of 20. You know, then I could have put one unit on either flank. I don't know. But, uh, you know, definitely something that could have been different there. Uh, the second biggest disappointment in my list was actually the wizard hat. Uh, a lot of times the wizard hat has done amazing things for me because there are some very good signature spells. And as well, uh, normally you, you with regular green skin magic, you can't beef up your trolls. However, with uh, the wizard hat, you can actually get some really good spells that make your trolls go from really good to freaking amazing broken. Uh, unfortunately, that just did not happen this tournament. Uh, out of three of the games, I got lower medal, and then in one... Yeah, really, it just did nothing the whole game. I, I mean, either I had useless spells, or I was up against too much magical power, so I couldn't get anything off. I, I really did nothing effective with that the entire game. So that was a little bit disappointing. I mean, it's always cool when you get stuff off, like Mind Razored Savages and stuff like that, but it just did not happen. So that was a little bit unfortunate. So that's really my thoughts on my list. I mean, you can't really get too tactical because, like I said, it was kind of made to to have the, those weaknesses and to be super extreme. Uh, a lot of people were really amazed that it didn't do as, as well as they thought. I'm also amazed. I mean, really, I got three big wins and two big losses. Uh, I more expected four big wins and one little loss. Uh, but it's, it's just the way things go. Uh, otherwise, uh, again... Uh, once bitten, he picked me up from the, uh, the the airport. He took care of me, drove me around, fed me. So again, a huge, huge shout out to uh, Once Bitten. That was really, really nice. He's a really great guy. Uh, you know, we're just chatting Warhammer all the time, and I was probably you know just tiring him out more than anything. But uh, it's just always so great to be there because I mean the guy's a professor. The guy's super smart, and uh, you know he can he can literally talk about anything. Uh, I mean, on the drive to the airport, I just throw out questions like, "Hey, so how uh, how do you think the state should just how do this will the state eliminate their debt?" And he just has an articulate answer ready to give you. Right? It's just it's 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 just great and lots of fun. But either way, uh, had lots of fun. So a lot of, lots of YouTubers. As far as the future, I really don't know if I can go again next year. Um, for those who didn't see, I got a new job, so that's awesome. I'm going to be back home. Uh, however, at the same time, I'm also going to be making significantly less money. So one of the things I'm going to have to really do is just look at it financially and just try and see whether I can make it work. Uh, one of the, the best arguments I can have is that the uh, money I make from my YouTube can go directly to this. So an argument like that really helps but argument or not, if, if times are kind of tight, and that, it's going to be tight this year because my wife doesn't go back to work till the following year, uh, you know, maybe I just can't go. And I think it really is going to come down to uh, the price of plane tickets, right? The plane ticket this year was super cheap, and that was awesome. But if we get to next year and uh, the price is more normal, because, I mean, I flew all the way across, like, to, from one country to another, from coast to coast, round trip, 500 bucks, And that's amazing. But let's say next year it goes to a thousand or something like that. That's going to be the deal breaker. So really, we're going to have to wait and see. But I really, really would love to go, especially if we can do that side YouTubers tournament. But uh, either way, thanks for watching. Uh, I still have two more videos coming from the event. I have the the Speed Hammer game against Nick, and then I also have another game against Once Bitten where uh, we did some proxies so I could do my high elf list against him. So uh, look forward to those, and thanks for watching. Bye.